Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. One of the most fascinating parts of the last five weeks, six weeks, give or take to me, uh, has been the fact that a lot of this news has roughly stayed only within the cryptocurrency space. Uh, every time we hit a brand new metric, a brand new all-time high, uh, something significant happens, or we pass by some other industry. It's never really noted until, like, maybe not ever. Like, it just kind of happens within the cryptocurrency space, and I think this also leads um, a lot of people around the world to not uh, pay attention to Bitcoin, to the cryptocurrency space, or just try their darndest not to in, in some sort of way. Um, one of the main ideas for a very long time has been uh, how Bitcoin is going to overtake gold. This was one of the discussions that we even had on the channel like in the earlier years and also my other uh, daily news channel called The Modern Investor, where it was like a really big idea that at some point as Bitcoin became more and more scarce, it would at some point pass by gold in a number of different metrics in usage, in accumulation, and also there's the, you know, the other deflationary aspects of Bitcoin and how we continue to find more and more gold yearly. As we have better technology, we can dig deeper into the earth, what have you. I stupidly assumed that over the course of years, as we hit these metrics, it would become common knowledge. That is to say, this information can be found on the internet. It's not like it's hidden. It's not like it's being, you know, kept from the masses, if you will. Uh, it's just kind of there. So whenever we do hear a lot of times in the cryptocurrency space that Bitcoin has done this to gold, Bitcoin has passed by silver, Bitcoin has passed by this company, or Bitcoin has passed by this other metric, uh, it never really makes global financial news. And I think probably that's more likely because uh, why would a government or a governing central bank uh, want the public to know that the thing that they were told was going to be the greatest economic benefit for them over since we've had it the last couple thousand years, that it would do any better than Bitcoin, finding out that Bitcoin has only done better than it. It's very similar to, I don't know if you've seen in the news the last like two or three weeks, a lot of countries have uh, weirdly begun to announce uh, that Bitcoin's evil and weird and terrible and is only being used by criminals all over again, uh, which is something that we went through heavily. Uh, 2013, 14, 15, 16, you can find all the news about it. And then around 2017, 2018, uh, when Bitcoin went up to 20,000, a lot of governments began to say the exact same thing. And that's when we actually had a couple of companies, Glassnode and Santiment, uh, come forward. I mean, the goal of uh, Santiment and Glassnode, they're kind of like digital snitches in a way where they like basically like see what's happening on chain at any given time. And then that information is, you know, sold to companies who, who need it, if you will. But they were the first companies to come forward and actually look through with the claims that something was wrong with crypto, that it was only being used by criminals. Um, and then we found out through these companies that apparently of all cryptocurrency transactions, maybe 0.05% of them could have been considered something that was illegal or wrong, which then put the entire thing to rest which is really funny that we're hearing all these governments talk about it all over again, has bit, how Bitcoin has no value and is only being used by the, the lowest of low criminals. And you get the idea. Dragging it on back to the topic at hand. A number of years ago, we started getting news that institutions were looking to get into the Bitcoin space. And the way that they were doing it to make extra capital was that they were actually selling a number of gold funds and gold ETFs and selling off their position in gold in some sort of way to be able to allocate only 5, 10, 15 million into the Bitcoin market. You can find the articles. They're quite old, if you will, but you can definitely still find them out there. So this, this and, I, and the reason why I only did the 5 to 10 million is because we're now talking about half a the camera does that. We're talking about like half a billion dollar inflows 
into the Bitcoin market now on a daily basis through the ETF. So half a billion comparative to just 5 million, you understand. It was recently reported that the amount of money flowing into the Bitcoin ETFs per day has basically set the ETFs apart from every other ETF that has nearly ever existed. I'm pretty sure we went over that in another video. The idea was that um, over the course of the couple of weeks that we've had the ETFs, they have outperformed every other ETF by 99.98%, and that was just over the course of the first four weeks that they were actually around. We're now getting constant daily news that the amount of inflows into these ETFs is anywhere from 200 million to, I think one day we had over like half a billion, it was like $550 million dollars just over the course of one day. So the amount of money in these ETFs has continued to expand in all different directions. One of the crazier metrics, if I can get my mouse to move, there we go. One of the crazier metrics has actually been the comparison not only to Bitcoin to other ETFs, but Bitcoin ETFs compared to gold ETFs. And I didn't know these numbers. And when I found it out, I was like, of course, it just, it just makes a lot of sense, especially when it comes to the actual usage and future usage of being able to move around money and value comparative to needing heavy gold or bars of gold to be able to exchange value in a more that is becoming more and more digital all the time. There's a Bloomberg ETF analyst. His name is Eric Balchunas. We've talked about him before. He said, so the amount of money that has flown into Bitcoin ETFs in four weeks, can you guess how long it took gold to have that same amount of money flow into their ETFs? I, I won't leave you hanging. In four weeks, it took gold two years. Not two months. Not two days. Two years to get to what the Bitcoin ETFs did over the course of a four-week period. And the issue with that is, is that after gold actually had a surge in money that flew into it in the initial period, it kind of flatlined. I know I'm doing this a lot, but you know, it's not an actual flatline, what have you. Um, and basically there was interest there, but it wasn't as much interest as people assumed that there was going to be. And this is why I think we saw an immediate pushback against the Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, from the SEC and a number of other countries, like nearly instantaneously. I don't know if you remember, it was Gary Gensler, he had the, the more popular one, uh, who said something along the lines of like, just because we've given you an ETF doesn't mean that we endorse it. Bitcoin's still terrible, horrible, awful, evil, and you know, all these other kind of things. And a bunch of other countries have begun doing the exact same thing. He said on Twitter, he said, the net cumulative flows for the Bitcoin ETFs has doubled in the past three days over $3 billion dollars. For context, it took gold nearly two years to get to this point after another half a billion dollars flew into the Bitcoin ETFs just yesterday alone. We are witnessing the actual movement, uh, and, I, and I use the term like wealth shift, like wealth movement, or like, uh, what's the term, wealth exchange? I try to use it relatively lightly. But it is happening in front of us. And I can only assume that governments aren't uh, talking about it as much. It's because they usually sometimes own a lot of gold. And a lot of them have been trying to discount the idea of what Bitcoin is or how popular that it actually is. But the problem is, is that people have access to the Internet. So you can lie to them on the TV as much as you want. But when people around the world continue to see that Bitcoin's price is rising or they should have bought Bitcoin before. Not sure if you, not sure if you saw some of the other videos where uh, Bitcoin has already hit a, a, a brand new all-time high in multiple different countries. And I, I think it's like 13 countries at this point this year already has already hit a brand new all-time high because of the devaluation of the fiat currencies in those countries. And we still, at the time of me making this video, have not gotten to the halving. It is going to be a very wild ride over the course of the next two years, and dare I even say from this point on, uh, because we are not that far off from uh, the market cap of a lot of large companies now, 
And we're also, I think if Bitcoin, I think, I think if Bitcoin does a 10x in price, I think we pass by gold. And that's this having. Still not 2028, still not 2032, when Bitcoin becomes even more scarce. Yeah, very interesting times that we are living through in, in multiple different ways. Um, I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be, I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.